So what is cancer? It gets initiated with something happening to the DNA. We're going to talk about that. Then it starts propagating. Once it reaches a certain size and it gets close to the blood vessel, it enters into the blood vessel and goes to distant sites. Every kind of cancer has its own favorite sites. That's why an oncologist knows where, 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 where to check. But it's not always predictable. And then once the metastasis reaches three millimeters in size, you get something called angiogenesis, and that is blood vessels start filling it, and it starts feeding it. And that's when the situation gets out of control. That's cancer. It's a rogue cell. Now I really want you to fasten your seatbelts. Pretend you're very interested right now. Okay, be wide awake. Because this is going to get a little bit tough right here. We're going to go through a couple, a few definitions. And then we're going to throw those definitions together. And you will have at your fingertips the best understanding we have of cancer today, which is not even really published yet. This is exciting stuff. So epigenome. What is epigenome? Epigenome is gene expression caused by mechanisms other than changes in the underlying DNA structure. So DNA is the helix, and that is really the book of life. That's what gets read for us, gives us our looks, our hair color, how we act even, <laughs> uh, just a lot of things about us. That gene expression can be changed. It's not hardwired. You've heard me say that several times. It can be changed by what we do. And that change happens through action of an epigenome. Just think of it of a gene on top of a gene controlling the gene's expression. That's an epigenome. It controls gene expression. Methylation, another really important concept that you're going to hear about in the news in maybe 20 or 30 years from now. <laughs> Methylation regulates gene expression, conversion of cytosine to 5-methylcytosine. If you're into biochemistry, you know cytosine is one of the DNA blocks that is every fourth or fifth one. And we can change it by something called methylation to something different. So our body has the ability to change our very DNA expression, fixing it by methylation. As we age, we get breaks in our DNA. Things break up, literally, physically. Methylation can fix it. Methylation is always a positive thing. Methylation is a very positive thing. thing. It's very much a fixing thing. It controls so many things in life. Methylation can prevent Alzheimer's. Methylation can fix cancer. Methylation breaks down excessive hormones. Methylation is powerful. Acetylation is something that is really recent in understanding, very recent. I had to dig all over the place to really find information on this. It regulates gene expression, affects especially histones. What is a histone? Look at histone as a brick around which DNA goes around. And then you have another brick here, and it goes around. Because there's so many of these twirls all over the place, we have to put it into the cell somehow, and the best way to package it is to make little spools of it. Yeah, and then put them all together. They're called centromeres. Now that little brick, we can actually change that through something called acetylation. It's another way of fixing large portions of gene expression. And here's the definition of histone. Spools around which DNA lines, they play a role in gene regulation. So this stuff gets pretty complex, as you can tell. <coughs> But it's fun. Next definition, phenotype. Stay awake here. <laughs> phenotype is any observable characteristics or traits of an organism. Results from the expression of an organism genes as well as the influence of environmental factors. So let's take the Native Americans again. Okay? That one family I was talking about in my office, long, sitting, very athletic, very Native American from old times, versus your typical Native American today, short, yeah, pot gut, acne ridden, diabetes, depressed, and has an extremely short lifespan. Identical genes. Identical. Different expression. B12 
phenotype. <coughs> They're both phenotypes. It's interesting because you can also see seashells. And all the same kind of seashell, depending which ocean you find them, will have a different color and patterns on them. They're identical, but they're expressed differently. So it happens on, on, all, on seashells, humans, everywhere. Phenotype is powerful stuff. We have Down syndrome patients here that have that characteristic facial appearance, larger tongue, and you, you recognize it when you see it, correct? You can make those physical appearances fade away with proper nutrition. You can change their phenotype. Did you know that all of us have Down syndrome cells in us? The only question is how many? All of us have them. And did you know that you can play up your Down syndrome cells by your lifestyle? It's not an on or off switch, it's just how many of them you have. And how well are you feeding those genes? Okay, this took me all weekend to come up with. This sums up everything that happens in cancer. And it's one of those you wrote it down and find out. Yes, that's it. Epigenetic dysregulation causing genomic instability due to altered methylation or acetylation pathways. And what this means, this is what cancer is. Our epigene, so our expression, our looks, our cancer, our health, abnormal regulation thereof, causing our genes to become unstable, because that's what cancer is. Gene, it's genes gone haywire, DNA doing crazy things, causing our cells to do, take over the body, make it become unfunctional, which is not a word I know, but it's the best I can do. This is due to methylation and acetylation pathways, so the fix and repair pathways are gone. They're not working. And why are they not working? Well, methylation is fueled, we know, by B12 and folic acid, or folate. 40% of us have a gene that causes us not to absorb folate. And on top of that, folate comes from the word foliage. We're not eating enough foliage. We're not getting enough folate. And those of us that have are that unfortunate little gene variation that we don't absorb, but we need it in very high quantities. And if we're not getting enough folate in our body, we're not fixing those DNA dysfunctions as they come up. And this can go on and on, causing chronic disease. And really, cancer is the ultimate expression of chronic disease. It's the final iteration. There is a continuum of a pathway towards cancer, which can be as long or short as 10 years and as long as a lifetime. And it can be very predictable. And they're coming up with markers right now that can predict it. There's two researchers in this world that I had the privilege of having uh, listening to an interview with that are going to publish soon markers involving the white blood cells and red blood cells that can measure these methylation pathways. But we have a little cheat system that I mentioned in a cardiovascular talk and that was homocysteine. Homocysteine also measures how well we are absorbing folic acid or folate and if we're utilizing it for methylation. We're seeing fascinating research coming out of Britain that shows homocysteine levels going up with cancer and going down with cancer regression. It's used there as a way of measuring success in cancer therapy, whichever route the patient is using, whether it's natural or chemical or surgical means. So if a cancer is on a decline, methylation somehow stabilizes itself and homocysteine goes down with it. And it's a very accurate marker and we're they're over there, they are now considering it, this is yet controversial, the most accurate tumor marker. Here we use something called CA125 which is kind of fuzzy because CA125 is influenced by a lot of other factors besides cancer. So you could be throwing a false positive in there, as we call that, false signal. Methylation pathways is measured directly with homocysteine. We are developing new laboratory methods using red blood cells and lymphocytes. But that's still a ways away. 